Welcome back, I'm Shane and this is Relative Time. A few months ago I got an email from a brand new micro brand asking if I'd be interested in reviewing their watch, and this really isn't that unusual these days. But there was something about this particular watch that really caught my eye, which is the Ozzy Midi by Phanos Watches, and if I mispronounce that I'm just going to apologize here in advance. Now in particular I'm a big fan of titanium watches. And here we have a 500 meter deep diver in a lightweight titanium case, and one that's also treated with an extra scratch resistant coating. More to the point, this just has a clean straightforward design. It also has a Swiss high beat movement and what I think is going to be a pretty good price. So I agreed to do the review and here we are. Now this will launch on Kickstarter in the coming months, but I'm not sure if a specific date has been set yet. Also, this is a prototype that I have been lent, and as such there may be some final changes in the end. And one of the nice things about small micro brands is that they are looking for feedback, and with Kickstarters they often have the opportunity to make changes if enough people ask for them. But onto the watch itself. Now spec wise, we are looking at a watch that's just over 42mm wide without, and just over 46mm wide with the crown which these days is fairly standard for a diver, yet the lug to lug here is a tad longer than I like at 50mm. Plus the end links that connect to that bracelet are just a little further beyond that. But despite all of that, I actually found it to be rather comfortable on my 7 inch wrist. The end links overhang a little bit, but the way the lugs curve down and connect to the first link of the bracelet perfectly lines up with the natural curvature of my wrist. And the same can be said with the molded rubber strap. Now combine all of that with a fairly light weight of 138 grams, and that's with the titanium bracelet, and this is one you can easily and comfortably wear all day. Which is one of the reasons I really love titanium. But titanium can be a bit of a double-edged sword. Personally, I love how lightweight it makes everything, and especially when it's a bigger watch. But for some, I think the lack of any real weight kind of instinctively makes them think there's a lack of quality, which really isn't the case here, it's just a lack of steel. Now patina on titanium can also scratch fairly easily, but here they added an extra protective coating that should prevent some of that, so kind of a bonus. Some of you may have already noticed the helium escape valve on the side, and this is sort of nice to have, and it seems to be coming more and more standard on some deeper divers. And here we have an amazing 500 meters of water resistance, which again is kind of nice to have. But just like that helium escape valve, both of these are kind of overkill and unnecessary for the majority of people. So on one hand it's kind of cool, but on the other it's not something most people would ever use. And along with that 500 meters of water resistance, you do have a total thickness here of 14.2 millimeters. Which really isn't bad considering the specs, but it's just a little bit taller than some other divers that are out there. Now as for the price itself, it's still being finalized, so I can't really get into the specifics or really talk too much about value, but it was mentioned that they're trying to shoot for just under 500 bucks, which is pretty decent for a diver with an Eta movement, let alone one with titanium. The overall finish here is very good, and very smooth to the touch. And that's something that's also matched with the bracelet. The case as a whole is just about as tool watch as you can get, with practically every millimeter here sporting a brushed finish, with the exception of a pretty narrow chamfered edge running down the lugs. It really looks like it's a great quality case, and it's a pretty clean straightforward design. And some people are really going to love that. But in some ways I think it is missing a little bit of visual flair just to help it stand out, and we'll talk more about this at the end. Now back to the front and to the right side of the case, we see that it extends out to create a nice set of crown guards, and it nestles a good portion of that crown. The crown as you would expect is both signed and screwed down, and as an added bonus the signed part is loomed. But there's not a whole lot of loom to it, at least for this prototype. Now visually I think the crown looks a little long, maybe sticking just a little bit too far out. 
yet I think it's just the right length to be able to get a decent grip on it and use. The bezel itself is titanium, and it does have a black ceramic insert, which overall looks great and perfectly matches the black dial. There are loomed Arabics every 10 and thin dashes in between on that bezel insert. And I think this works really well with the indices on the watch just to really draw your eyes in. The bezel's also just wide enough and just tall enough to easily get a good grip on it. It's also 120 click and unidirectional as you'd expect. But the action itself has some room for improvement. There's just a ton of backplay to it. But this is something that they're aware of, and hopefully something they can work out for the final versions. Now underneath the domed sapphire crystal, the dial is a beautiful dark glossy black. Yet even with three layers of air coating on that crystal, the entire thing can be a bit reflective. As here, I think you can easily make out my camera, and even the red cable that goes to my microphone in the reflection. So starting at the edge of the dial and then working our way in, we have a raised black chapter ring. Yet it's more of a matte texture than the glossiness of the dial and the bezel, and kind of stands out sitting in between the two. The chapter ring has minutes painted on it in white and cutouts for the applied indices, which I think looks really fantastic here. Not only is it an excellent way to make sure everything lines up, but it also creates a seamless transition across the various elements, just to give the whole thing a more cohesive look. Each of the indices has a white frame that is then filled with white loom, which helps them stand out boldly against the black glossy backdrop. There's a larger triangle at the 12, some larger dashes at the 3 and 9, and then just smaller dashes spread throughout. And all of this really seems just to lead your eyes directly to the center of the dial. The handset that's used here is a very Omega Plowprof, where you have a smaller sword hour hand and kind of a jumbo sized minute. And here you also have what I would call a cattail second hand. Although typically with a Plowprof style, the jumbo sized minute hand is in a very vibrant color, and here it's in a matching white. Now I have to say that the Plowprof style is probably my least favorite handset. That really short hour hand always bugs me. And here, not only is the hour hand short, but I think the minute is as well. But even with that, I gotta admit that the hands here in white look pretty good with the design and against the glossy black backdrop. Now below the 12, you have the brand logo. And below the hands, you have the model name with water resistance. And overall, it looks pretty good on the dial. And the font is very small and unobtrusive which just helps to keep that dial rather clean. Now down at the six, or rather part of the six, is the date. It's a simple cutout with a white date wheel. It's a great choice for position, and I do think it blends into the design nicely. Even to the point that at first glance, it almost looks like an indicator. And just below that on the chapter ring, you have the Swiss movement text. And honestly, I'm not sure they really need this. Swiss made is one thing, but Swiss movement is a whole lot less impressive. Now it's fairly small, so it's not really a big deal, but I think it adds just a bit of unneeded clutter. As a whole, I think this is a rather good looking design, and maybe one of the more straightforward and clean dials I've seen. It's easy to read, and easy to use. I just personally make those hands a little bit longer. Now as for the loom, well, this is another area they really need to improve on. I do love the look, especially with the use of the blue BGW-9 on everything including the bezel, but there's just not enough loom here. In my comparison tests, the hands fade out just after a Vostox, which is not that great. Although strangely, the loom on the dial itself seems pretty good, but without the hands itself, it's kind of useless. So at the very least, they need to improve the hands, just to keep up with its own dial. Now, movement-wise, you're looking at an ETA 2824. High beat, 38-hour power reserve, hacking, and hand winding. Overall, just a great movement, and one of the ones a lot of people prefer for microbrands. Although, personally, I'd be curious what they could have done with a Miyota 9015. A little bit less, and a little bit thinner, and I wonder if they could have got the watch just a little bit thinner as well. But at that point, it wouldn't be Swiss. Now, as far as the straps go, well, there are going to be two options. The first is a molded rubber strap and then a titanium bracelet. 
And let's start off with that strap, which is actually the one I preferred out of the two. It's a bit stiff at first, although I'm sure it'll break in in time, but it just has a good solid feel to it, as well as some matching hardware. Plus that rubber strap has a great look to it, as the ends are molded to meet the case perfectly. And it also works well with the titanium, just to make the whole thing even lighter. Now the bracelet itself seems pretty good, and it is titanium which also matches the case, and that does include that extra scratch resistant coating. The bracelet has solid links, solid end links, but unfortunately it does have a pressed clasp and not milled. Which, for a lot of people, and at this price, is going to be a problem. I think the number of comments I got on the Orange Star Divers press class pretty much proves that. Although, since this is a Kickstarter, that might be something that can be changed. Now, the other aspect of the bracelet we should talk about is the design itself. It's a very simple oyster-style bracelet with an entirely brushed finish. So, just like the case, it's a very straightforward design, and one that kind of lacks any extra details or frills. Which isn't necessarily a bad thing, and especially on a design that's supposed to be a pure tool watch. For some people, I think this is going to be exactly what they want, which is a straightforward watch with good components and a great build quality. And in that regard, it has it. In some ways, it even reminds me of a Tudor Pelagos which is maybe the ultimate pure tool watch, and a lot of people love it for that straightforward aesthetic. However, for others, and I think I fit into this category, they want a bit of flash with their function, and especially when you're getting into this price range, which maybe is why I like this a lot more on that molded strap. Where the bracelet just seemed to blend into the background, the strap here looks great, and even helps the watch stand out more. So whether or not you're going to be interested in this might just depend on where you land in that divide. But regardless, the quality is here, and I think this is one to keep an eye on. If nothing else, just to see how well it does in its Kickstarter. Anyway, that's my take on the once again mispronounced Ozzy Midi by Phanos Watches. But be sure to let me know your thoughts down below, and especially what you think about this straightforward design. And as always, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for joining me.